Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Prophetic Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning MySQL trigger tutorial for beginners. This is our part 2. Inside this video session guys, we will continue about the introduction and inside this, we will see about types of triggers as well as about naming convention of MySQL triggers. In the first part, we had seen about the introduction where we had seen about database triggers, what its advantage as well as what are its limitations. Now inside here, let's discuss about firstly called types of triggers. So basically, there is no type of triggers, but the triggers are differentiated on the behalf of event activation time. So by the differentiation of trigger activation time, we have divided into six types. So we can define maximum six triggers for each table, something called before insert. This is our trigger activation time and this is all about trigger activation event. So activated before data is inserted into the table. After insert, activated after data is inserted into the table. So in the same way, before update, after update, before delete and after delete. So basically we have TML statement called insert, update and delete. So for each, we have two activation time called before and after. It means that before insertion or after insertion, before update and after update. So let's say that before delete, activated before data is removed from the table and activated after data is removed from the table. So on the behalf of these lines, actually we understood about that if we want to insert some data inside the table. So before insertion, this is the trigger point means activation time and activation event. So by using this event, we can attach with our create event definition and by the help of that actually we can run our trigger before insertion. After insertion if you want to run, so this is we have to choose called after and insert. This is the checkpoint by putting this actually we can run our trigger after inserting the data to a particular table. So these are the maximum 6 triggers for each table actually we can run inside database triggers. But remember, this is only for the TML statements like insert, update and delete. Let's say that if you want to choose truncate, as we know that by using truncate, it will empty the table from the one index. So when we use a statement as a that does not use insert, delete and update a statement to change the data in a table, the triggers associated with the table are not invoked. So when we use our truncate command, so on truncate command, these will not run, means any trigger will not be invoked inside any of the table. So from the next video, we are going to create our triggers to our database and we will run according to that. But before that, what should be the naming convention, actually we have to follow to write any trigger to our database triggers. So if we go to the next slide. Now naming convention, we must use a unique name for each trigger associated with a table. However, we can have the same trigger name defined for different tables through it is a good practice. So here, these two lines are very simple to understand is that we have to make a unique trigger name associated with each table. We have same name of triggers inside different different tables, but inside the same table, we don't have two name of triggers. Okay, so what should be the actually naming convention we have to follow? So we should name the triggers using the following naming convention. So before and after, this is trigger activation time. After activation time, we have to provide underscore and the table name, underscore and this is our trigger event, all about TML statements. So let's understand with an example. So if I open a new tab and let's say that we have called messages table into our database. So what basically we have to write as the naming convention to creating an trigger. So let's say that here, firstly we have to provide our trigger activation time. So let's say we are going to create after delete, after delete trigger name. 
so after this is all about activation time underscore and the table name so it should be called messages underscore and we have to provide trigger event so we want insert so this is the trigger name something called after messages insert we want let's say that before deletion we want to take history of any particular table so let's say that we have a table something called students now before deletion we want to take history of that row so what should be the name so name is that we want delete it means trigger activation time underscore and the table name something called students and we want at the time of delete it should not be delete here it should be after because activation time so after students and we have to provide delete here so this is all about our sorry again because we want to take history so this is before here so here we did two times silly mistakes to write our activation time let's say that before update let's say if we write a statement before update we want to take logs of row so how can we write activation time it should be before let's say students table and we want add the update so this should be our trigger event so these are the naming convention guys basically we need to follow to write or define any trigger name in the next video we will see that how can we create our triggers to our database triggers so basically if we summarize the contents of this video so if i back to here so these are trigger activation time means if we want to get the data before insertion or we want to operate something before insertion so we want to use this type of trigger after insert before update after update before delete and after delete so on the behalf of activation time and the dml statements we have categorized six triggers for each table and finally on the behalf of trigger activation time and with the dml statements we have write our table name something like this what we have seen right here inside this slide so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day